Hi everyone, um, my name is Ella, this is my channel The Spectrum Stitcher and it's a channel about cross stitch and all things crafting um, and today I have a special guest, my gran, Fairy Bond. Very special. <laughs> Very special guest, an honoured guest and we're going to be um, talking about gran's crafting because that's what inspired me um, to do crafting um, and gave me the skills that when I was an adult and ready to give um, cross stitch and knitting and things like that ago I had the skills that Gran taught me when I was a when I was growing up when I was a kid so it's sort of my origin story we can make this more about me and I actually just <laughs> want to celebrate um, a very respected crafter in my life um, and yeah I just want to celebrate crafting and needlework and hand handiwork in general um, but I just also want to acknowledge before I start asking Gran some questions um, that we're filming this from Wathorong country um, in Geelong, Australia. Um, so let's get into it, Gran. We've got our cup of tea. We encourage right. you to have a cup of tea as well. Right. Granny. Yes, dear. <laughs> what, um, what does crafting or what has crafting meant to you in your life? What has it given you? Enormous pleasure. Um, filled in a it's also been it's been very useful. I, when my children, my four children and nine grandchildren were all little, I made a lot of stuff for them. Mm -hmm. And being able to not be frightened at the sight of uh, needle and thread um, was very very useful. So, how did you gain the needlework skills that you have? Um, when I was a kid growing up, my Although I was, my mum died when I was young and my grandmother died when I was young, but I remember them, they were beautiful stitches, made lovely tablecloths and all sorts of things. And I did remember one thing, and it sort of set me going, was how to pad out before you do satin stitch. Mm. And I, that's the one thing I remembered, and then it's just been experimentation for me from then on. I, I really just worked it out myself. That's amazing, <laughs> because I think, you know, you've taught me a lot of things. Um, but then as I've revisited some skills when I've wanted to try things as an adult, sometimes I'll go to YouTube or watch a video, but of course you didn't have YouTube. Um, so did you literally figure it out by just trying things with needle and thread or did you have some resources? Um, Learning resources? No. Well, we, it's a funny thing. When I was training to be a teacher, we had, we were, we had to do stitching and knitting and stuff. I don't think I started seriously embroidering until, oh, I think I might have been, I might have been in my 20s and 30s that I started doing that. Pardon me. Um, but I did have books. I did buy some books. Mm -hmm. and um, But I, I like to make up my own patterns. I like to draw my own uh, designs. So... Um, that was good because I'd, I'd be drawing it and thinking, oh, you know, you could do a satin stitch here or that could be chain stitch and, that, you know, like that. Because you're very artistic as well and you can draw and you've done beautiful printing and um, painting as well as sculpture. Yeah, I have embarrassing, my dear. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I was, it's interesting actually, though, that you like um, more freestyle mm. embroidery because I find a lot of comfort in someone giving me some instructions and a pattern and something to follow. And if I have... The opportunity to do something freestyle well I don't really take it because it intimidates me I don't feel that I have that natural sort of artisticness that that well, you obviously you really relish. you might get into that though later I hope so I would like mm. to use my crafting as an opportunity for growth and um, while I you know enjoy the repetitive motion of um, doing little X's with my cross stitch and I enjoy following a pattern I think it'd be nice to try to branch out a bit I started, I did do a little stint of cross-stitching, but I'm too impatient and I didn't like having to count all the time. <laughs> yeah, I like to be able to just stick the stitch in and do that. That's great. Yeah. I, um, I should have asked you maybe a bit earlier, but what, tell, give me a list of all the crafts you've tried over the years that you, mm. you can remember. Probably too many to, An awful to lot. list, but I've what's had, the highlights? Well, I've had, um, I've done embroidery, of course, and, um, and, um, sewing and china painting and um, sculpting and um, print making and doll making um, and uh, 
what else have I done? Oh, I can't remember. Really. I've probably done a lot more than that, but I can't remember. So the doll making was um, porcelain dolls, wasn't yes, it? Yes, porcelain dolls. Oh, yep. I've made cloth dolls as well. Oh, great. And um, um, I, I, I'd sort of say, oh, I tried mosaics. Oh, I remember that. You had oh. beautiful um, mosaic works in your, in your previous garden. Mm. Um, mosaics, what else? Um, oh, you, you name it, I've probably done yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm very interested in craft in general. Yeah. And uh, fascinated by what... Oh, enamelling, I've done enamelling. Oh, wow. And um, um, what else have I done? I'm just trying to think. Would you say you have a favourite? Like, what were your ones that you stuck with for the longest? Well, simply because of the... Oh, and patchwork, I did a lot of patchwork. But... Um, Probably the ones I did most were the ones that were easily transportable. Uh, that's why I think embroidery was very good because I could just take a little box with a few threads in it and a bit of material and off I'd go. So would you take it camping and things like oh, that? Oh yes, oh yes. One time I was making figures, well, I was in a play and uh, needed some little figures. So I was down at the prom making these little men and women in that's amazing because yeah. I um I've taken some cross stitch glamping so glamping as in you know we had a split si camping, yeah we yeah. had a split system air conditioner in the beautiful bell tent with a full size you know real bed in there um but I've never taken it camping um but you were probably doing the sort of stuff that you didn't want to get dirty well that's my main anxiety but I think maybe I should just try to calm down a bit about that because I start I make things and then I get worried about them being used and I think I've got to realize <laughs> that, that yeah. you're making things to, to have use. things of beauty yes. for use yes. um, yes. But, and, and you can always what you always do is always wrap it up carefully yes you know? and if you're just sitting with your lap in a tent it's not much different to sitting in on your lap in your lounge room yes I think I think that will be another area of personal growth for me to just because mm. I think um, cross stitching for me is relaxation and some aspects of camping and things like that I find not relaxing mm. and so it would be a good way to you know if I once I finally get the kids to bed or whatever to then yeah. relax yeah. so I have we went to Anglesey recently and we stayed in a um a glamping thing there and I did a bit of cross stitch once the kids fell asleep then but mm. lighting's an issue too did you it used is. to sit with a head to you probably would have had the kerosene lamp <laughs> no we had that it wasn't kerosene it was um it was a tilly, yeah, a tilly lamp with, um, I don't care, ter was it, what was in it? Mets, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think it was kerosene. But anyway, I didn't work for tilly. Okay. Men in the cab. Yeah. Did that. Def defined yeah. gender roles, that's <laughs> yeah, okay. so they were at that stage. Um, and I wasn't doing an awful lot of it then either, I think. A bit, I suppose. So you made a lot of clothing for your family as well. I did, yes. And I... Did a lot of co um, theatre costuming as well. And um, if you had to choose between the sort of more practical clothes you made for family members, for your kids growing up or for me, grandkids when we were little, versus, you know, the more elaborate costumes, what did you enjoy? More? Oh, I loved doing the elaborate costumes. I did a lot of costuming and with beading and stuff like that, especially like I did all the, in the just for Geelong, for local production, I did all the costumes for My Fair Lady. Mm -hmm. And I made a beautiful ball gown for Eliza. I was mm -hmm. very thrilled with that and did all the beading down the back. And it, yeah, I was very happy with that. Actually, Gran, was, you were showing me before we started filming, you've got a, a photo album of lots of um, costumes you've made. So mm -hmm. I will um, borrow that when I'm editing this and try to insert some photos. We did take some photos of some of the things we're going to show today. But if there's some extra costumes and stuff you'd like me to put in, I can try to do that. Oh, if you want to. <laughs> I, think, I think everyone would be very interested to see. Yeah. Um, but I remember um, growing up, I just always remember that you were working on something. Yes. Um, yes. Quilts. Uh, you made me a Christmas dress every year from when I was one to I when I was too. about 13. I did. I made all my granddaughter's Christmas dresses. Oh. That's amazing. Because how many granddaughters do you have? Six. Yeah. So that's six dresses a year. Well, uh, or you sort of alternated whose alternate, turn it was. Yes. Well, no, I think I, I sometimes just altered the dresses, like took hems down. See, or I was lucky down. being the eldest. You were. I would get the new dress every time. <laughs> yes, yeah, you did. Um, but yeah, I had beautiful dresses every year, and um, he made my year nine formal dress. I did. I'd forgotten. I was very proud of that. Yeah. That was a thing with the 
It was shot silk. Shot silk, yes. Golden, hot well, pink. Yes, yeah. that's right. And it was, uh, I had it sort of uh, peplum type style on the front, didn't I? It was yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've, yeah, you've... And I made my two daughters' wedding dresses. Mm -hmm. Made other wedding dresses too, but my two daughters and the headdresses for their weddings. And, and I love arranging flowers. And I did their, their flowers for their weddings and, yeah. Anyway, that was all very nice. And I was just thinking back to you describing My Fair Lady, the costumes you did for that. There's the scene, the Ascot scene, is it? Yeah. Where there, how many hats did you have to make for that? Well, actually, for that, I designed them, but I didn't make them. I got, I got the girls from the Catholic school oh, to okay. do it in their... They were doing it in their... Um, for their well, some sewing thing they had to do. You know, mm -hmm. it, was, it seemed to be marked. The year 11 and 12s were doing it. But I designed them and then I went over there and sat with them a few times to show them how to do them and mould them. We were, uh, there must have been about 10 of them, I suppose. And they yeah. were all individual and different. Yes, they, they were, were phenomenal. Yes, and we had, yeah, they, they, were, they looked nice. I was pleased with it, but I was pleased with the costumes. Oh, sorry, That's darling. Okay. Pleased with the costumes too because yep. they, they were quite elegant, those. And then I did all the ball gowns for the ball scene and they were, I had, someone had given me a whole lot of saris. Oh, great. Which was great. So I made these lovely ball gowns out of sari. So that was nice. So what's your favourite fabric to sew with and your least favourite fabric to sew with? My least favourite fabric is, um, uh, you know, ju uh, uh, not jersey, what do you call it? The, the silky sort of stuff, you know. Shall um, I get, is it lycra? But lycra. Remember when you were... Lycra, but I, I did cats. Oh. It's a bit of, I, it was a bit of a, um, I thought I might anticipate your answer there because I remember when you were doing the costumes for the musical cats, mm. of all the cats are in lycra with fur over the top yes. of the lycra. Yeah. What it, a that, nightmare that was. I remember it, you had fur all over your house, you know, um, I had fake fur. fur. All over yeah. my house, yes, yeah. I did, and I had it up my nose. <laughs> <laughs> and getting lycra to fit, you know, I don't know how to looks, say it politely, yeah. but to fit how, so it fits people nicely. But also, this was Geelong Amateur Theatre, so yeah. you just got n normal bodies, not trained no, athlete no, dancer bodies. No. And, <laughs> and with the lycra, you have to sew that. I put fur strips and lots of things like that on it, but I had to sew the the fur, which was sort of leather on the back, with big, um, with shearing elastic, so that it would stretch with the material when they moved. So it's actually quite a feat of engineering, a lot oh, of the things you made. A lot of things were, yeah. Yeah. Mm. You had to think them through. And the cat's tails, I worked out how to do actual cat's tails, I made a... Um, and I had a working bead show everybody had to do it <laughs> because a lot of them in the shows they just put a thing hanging down but I made a cat's tail sitting out like that wow. so it was good mm. um, so that's your least favourite fabric was lycra yes fur. and my most favourite uh, my most favourite oh I love it I love all the uh, elegant pretty things I love um taffeta and um, I love silk, deeply on silk um, and I like cotton too to sew, it's really easy and good to sew, yeah, I don't know, just give me anything, I'll have a go. <laughs> so that's fabric, with your embroidery, um, have you mainly used cotton threads or have you ever used silk threads or satin? Uh, uh, no, I've mostly just used Yes, I've, I've used satin threads. Mm -hmm. I've used, I've used um, metal threads too. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. I think um, I've I've tried to use the DMC brand of metallic threads, but I find it very hard to get my stitches to look nice. It's a very difficult. They're very difficult to use, and you, uh, what I found is I had to get used to cutting new little bits all the time because it would stretch and things would come off and you'd have to be prepared to just do three or four stitches and then start with a new wow. piece. So you've got to be very, very patient with mm. that sort of thread. Yeah. Okay, well that's a good tip. So mm. so Grand's advice is short lengths of metallic threads will help keep your yes, stitching. If you use too much and it all wrote tangled around itself. Mm. And um, so the main threads that you've used maybe the DMC brand? Yeah, of what's, the other, what's the other one? There's, uh, anchor. 
Oh That's yeah. Not, yeah, I've never used anchor threads, but mm. um, yeah. that was the main one when I was starting. Oh, that's interesting because when yeah. I go to our like big brand, um, you know, uh, craft stores, so I, a lot of people in the floss tube community, Grana, in like America, not I don't know if any of them follow me, but um, mm. they have their big stores are like Michaels and Joanne's, but ours here are Lincraft and Spotlight and that's things right. like that. Yeah. Um, so in Lincraft and Spotlight, there's mainly DMC. I've noticed I haven't seen any anchor there. So that's an well, interesting an change. Old one. Mm. Yeah. And I, I inherited from my grandmother, who was a great embroiderer, <laughs> a box of thread. But <laughs> it was like a, a bundle of it, all in together, all sorts of, you know, you had, to pull a thread, you'd have to find, well, that's about the colour I want. And you'd pull it out <laughs> and try and undo it. And <laughs> there were very few actually hanks of thread they're all this mixed up but i had a great fun with them because i was only a little girl when i got that and that's very thrifty of you too to use someone else's <laughs> the rest of someone else's stash or you know oh, yeah. craft supply and then to use it yourself oh, I, did, just... I didn't have a lot of money when i was started to embroider mm. Mm. no it's good i think it's good and you know i found um cross stitch to be a more accessible craft cost wise because threads are a lot cheaper than um um you know buying a whole skein of wool for knitting but then you get obsessed with it and i buy all these patterns and i buy all these supplies for uh, the patterns and then oh, i yeah, and then the framing costs quite a lot of money which it should i mean yeah. framing is a it skill is. it's good and it's but you know, <laughs> i spent so much money that i could hardly afford on my crafts really yeah so i spent a lot on doll making because that's a very expensive craft mm. And um, but I was t I was working then I was teaching so that makes me feel a bit relieved because I've always um, uh, like I know that you've always been excited about craft supplies and we'd mm. be in a fabric shop and you'd be like oh isn't this beautiful isn't this beautiful but um, I sort of feel like my um, sort of desire to accumulate and collect pretty craft supplies oh. is almost out of control so to think that <laughs> to hear that you also found it difficult to rein yourself in oh, makes me feel yes. like it's Oh, not just yes. me. No, I've, I've, I've done that for a long time. Like that. What about, because um, in the floss tube community, they refer to works in progress as whips. And um, there's a lot of people who ha like to be what they call a monogamous stitcher, so stitch one thing at a time. And then there's some people who enjoy having sometimes a hundred whips, works in progress. I wouldn't have a hundred, but I have a fair few. <laughs> yeah, but you, would yours be sort of more multi craftable Because I always remember growing up, you might be... Um, stitching a quilt and doing some embroidery, like you'd have a few different crafts on the go. Yes, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I, but yeah. what's the, the most amount of whips do you think you've had at any one time? I've got one. In fact, I think I just got rid of it when I've just moved, you know, I've just moved into this little house and uh, I just finally came to it. I thought, I am never going to finish that. And I've had it since I was 16. <gasps> what is it? <laughs> it's gone now. It's gone. Oh. <laughs> it was a... Um, it was a uh, tapestry type thing, and it was the seasons. Uh, went from you know winter, s uh, winter, spring, summer, autumn across it. Oh wow! It was about about uh, I don't know, I suppose nearly a meter long, and I. <laughs> I just went to the op shop. I, d I gave it to the op shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry. Yeah, That's I, okay. I, I thought I did save quite a few things. For That's you. right, yeah. and you, you can do whatever you like with your own things, but yeah. But um, I, I just I, thought uh, I, I can't. I'll hang probably on go and buy it. From, I'll go and buy it from the op shop probably, because <laughs> I I go around. Um, there's a few floss tubers who enjoy going and to op shops and antique places and picking up either completed or um, unfinished pieces of needlework, and we call it save the stitches. Mm -hmm. So I've. Um, in my previous videos shown a few doilies and things that I've picked up at op shops and of, mm -hmm. often they're, they're, they're sold for far less than they're worth given the amount of time someone's spent on it yeah. but I like the idea that you know they're precious to me and so yeah. they'll well, be having a new home with someone making who's... a quilt like that one I made with doilies on it you know you know my heritage quilt that I had yeah, yeah. it's got beautiful is doilies. that one of the ones we're going to show yes yep. uh, doilies that were um, tattered the mm. tatting that's another thing I've tried tatting but the um so, so can you explain tatting because i've talked about it a couple of times assuming that that's what's on the edge of doilies because some I, of it is some yeah. of it's grocery but tatting is it's done more with a, a sort of a, a thick cotton mm -hmm. more than a 
Oh, you can. It's got there's a little shuttle, mm-hmm. and it's got a little hook thing on the end of it, and you you sort of. It's a bit like crocheting, mm-hmm. and it's much smaller. Mm. And I'll show you when we get to the quilt what it is. Yeah, and I'd also like to I'd be interested when we get to that quilt to hear about how you use doilies because I've started to accumulate quite the supply of <laughs> antique doilies. Um, okay, and I yeah, and I'd like to find a way to celebrate those doilies rather yeah. than keep them in a drawer. Um, so I think that that leads us to maybe showing some of your work, Gren. Okay. What would you like to start with? Would you like to start with things on top? We'll just so go with what's on that. top. Yeah. Now, full and fair disclosure, Gren did ask me to iron a couple of the things we're showing. <laughs> I'm not the most accomplished person at ironing, plus um, and I was too they're now in a heap so. next to us. No, you're not too no, lazy. No, I've, I can't use my right yeah, arm anymore. Yeah, be so. kind to yourself, Gren. <laughs> um, so... This is the, what's on top. Now, we'll do our best to show, but also I should say we've taken some photographs which I will insert at the end of the video um, or if I'm feeling really special about my non-existent editing skills, I might put them in intermittently, but they'll be in this video at some point. Now, this is one that I um, drew the design. Yep, so I'm just going to show some close-up of this is part of the design. It was berries and leaves and... Um... I made the tablecloth and then embroidered and then I put crocheting around the edge. Great. Now I'll just see if I can get a picture of the central um, design. Is that in the frame? Mm. So this is stitched using, is it um, Anchor or DMC cotton? You probably DMC probably. Lovely. Yeah. And um, how did you feel about choosing the colours for it? Oh, well I had, a, I had green velvet on my dining chair so I sort of... <laughs> went from that that's wonderful yeah. mm. and it's a beautiful um oval shaped um yeah. tablecloth because my dining table was oval and i didn't have any di- any dining things to any tablecloth to put on it i love time. that this is your own design um because i think a lot of uh people you know choose yeah. other people's designs to use which is great as well but the fact that this is as beautiful as it is and you designed it just really shows your artist side coming through thank you darling um and how long do you think it took you to do oh i don't know that, people always ask me that but I'm, because i've always got three or four things on at the same time yeah i really don't know um but was it something you do in the evenings yeah, yeah do in the evening and i do uh, you know i might do all the brownie bits first then all the leaves and or another time i might just do the one just, yeah. you know so just whatever you feel stop like. me being bored yeah yeah mm. And um, this is a beautiful, perhaps, linen. Linen. linen it's a yeah. lovely cream colour. It's just gorgeous. Mm. It was funny because when we were um, gathering the things together to film with tonight, you said, oh, there's not really much to show and just a couple of quilts. And then I'm going through your cupboard and I'm like, did you do this? Do you do this? And like, yes, I did this. I'm like, oh, my goodness, Gran. <laughs> you've got so many things that you've made. And, and, you know, a lot of things that you've gifted as well. So we can't really show the full no. amount of the things, no. your legacy, stitching legacy, because a lot of them are in other people's homes. Mm. But it's lovely that we've got a few treasures to show today. Now this is another one that I, I, I found in your cupboard tonight. So I'll um, there's another tablecloth. Tea tablecloth. Yeah. Yep. So this is the there's one of these in each corner, and there's this beautiful. I love this green in yes, the. Yes, I did that too. Um, I'm trying to get this up nice and close. There we go. So tell me about this one, Granny. Um, it was one of the first tablecloths I did actually. I think I might have done that even when I was in. Um, Teachers College. Lovely. I think. Yeah. So how um, old were you then? Uh, 17, 18. Wow. 18 or 19. It's beautiful. Yeah. And, and was uh, this one that you designed or was it something that... No, th- this was printed. This one was printed. I just decided which stitches to do. Mm-hmm. But really there was hardly anything else you could choose because... That obviously had to be, um, you know, just a little slip stitch and that that was chain stitch there to make it a bit thicker. Mm -hmm. You can see that I wasn't very good at that stage at um, uh, tension. My tension was a bit tight. Yeah, Yeah. you can see some replays. I I think it adds to the charm. I got better over the years. Yeah. (laughs) So, it's gorgeous. Yeah. Mm. I love it. It's a nice little tea tray. It is. One. It was much easier to iron than the big oval thing. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you can necessarily tell that I am. 
Um, okay. The next one's yours, love. Yes. Well, while we were here, I thought we'd show something that I cross stitched for Gran. Um, it, so it was lovely. She gave it to me for Christmas. Yes. Now I am going to have to figure out who the designer was. I'll put it in the description box below. But I, I think I got it from the Itchy Stitchy website. Um, and I'll just have to double check the designer. And um, it's stitched using DMC on 14 count Rustico Ada, um, all the called for DMC. And I just loved this, this fade mm. from the deep purple into the very light purple and then the dark green into the very light green. Um, it's very delicate. It's lovely. I love it. Mm. Yeah, and I just backed it with some felt, which I'm not very good at. Um, but that's something I want to improve is my finishing techniques. And then I tried to freehand embroider my initials and Gran's initials and a little love heart, which that was fun just to give that a go. And that was just, you know, straight out of my brain, out of, you know, the few stitches Gran had taught me as a kid. Um, so I was proud that something, some muscle memory came back and I didn't have to Google how to do that. Um, so anyway, that was nice. I enjoyed doing that. And there is one more colorway from memory of this pattern um, with beautiful um, light blues into dark blues and then a um, pink into light pink. So like this, but yeah, that colorway. But I liked this color for Gran. These are very, um, particularly greens are Gran's colors. Mm -hmm. So I thought we'd I'm show that. I'm very impressed with that because of the, it's like the little petty point you've done. Thanks, Gran. Mm. Yeah, I like, I enjoyed it. It was very calming, this stitch. And I think if the colours are pretty, I feel relaxed while I'm doing it. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd show that while we're here. Now we've got some quilts with us and they're going to be very hard to show in this format, but we have taken some photos as yeah, well. Yeah, but the, the, the heritage quilt will be alright. We'll just show. We'll show block by block. block. block so we'll those. probably do that one in quite a lot of detail because a lot of thought went into, yes, into the, the planning. Went to the, yes. Not that they didn't with these ones no. as well, but... These more the ones we're about to show are more geometric. So, yes. this what's this one, Gren? That's my Christmas quilt for the kids. I only did it because I had lots of different um, bits of Christmas material. I was a bit of a squirrel with that, and I wanted to make it so when the kids are in in my house at bed at Christmas time, and they could say, you know, oh, I found I found the match to that one. It's down there, or something. <laughs> you know, this, they're like. T the swans are there and then the swans are somewhere else and so they used to like that sort of thing. I do like that about quilts about um they sort of invite you in to be really focused and, mm. and calm and I also just loved being tucked up underneath this because we'd often stay at your place on Christmas yes, Eve and wake up at your place on Christmas Christ morning that's right and um to be tucked up underneath this felt very special <laughs> yeah. um so there's a beautiful big center um star we'll see if I can mm. show that that's very gorgeous and then the outsides, you've got some hexagons and some squares. Did you follow a pattern or did you choose? No, no, I just made it up. That's amazing, Gran. And then the back is a um, beautiful holly fabric or one piece yeah. or one yeah, fabric. Or one fabric. And yeah. then the binding seems to be um, dark green with some gold spots. And um, do you know what sort of binding techniques and things you use, Gran? I've never made I'm, a full I'm quilt, quite, so... I'm quite ignorant about what I do, actually, Ella. Sometimes I just make it up and then I find that other people do it and there's, this, you know, there's a name for it or something, you know. I love I that, just... Gran, because I've, I get overwhelmed when I... about, like, oh, well, how do I do things properly? But you've made these beautiful, long-lasting things that are beautiful and have held the test of time in terms of staying together, and you've just made it up. <laughs> well, I'm just... It's just, uh, uh, perhaps I'm just not very good at following patterns. <laughs> no, well, yeah. and it's funny actually, one of my favourite floss tubers who um, inspired one of the, other than, you know, my um, crafting heritage that inspired me to um, stitch, what actually, one of the people who started, inspired me to start filming about my stitching was Catherine from Neat and Not by the Sea. And um, she's a very um, sort of freehand, doesn't like following patterns with either embroidery or quilting or anything mm. like that. She also hand quilts everything. So hand stitches all her quilts, doesn't like using machines. So that's mm. really amazing no, as well. I prefer hand quilting too, actually. Yeah? What, yeah. Do, what do you prefer about it? Well, because it, you can... Well, I'm, not, I'm, I'm probably better hand stitching than I am on machine, you see. And I like, I like to be precise. I'll show you on my heritage quilt. 
Mm -hmm. That's where you can see mostly, my, I mean, this hasn't got much quilting on it really. It's just mostly machine sewn. Oh no, that, that was all stitched. They were all stitched down. Yeah, I can see the whips. Mm -hmm. So did you um, have a bit of white backing here and then sort of stitch on the top of that? Yep. So yep. it's applique them, I think, yep. some of it. Applique it all. Yeah. All that, all that stuff is applique. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Because mm. that saves you from having to do these tiny little yeah, bits, bits that you'd have to, to yes. join it together. That's yeah. a really clever idea, I think. Oh, okay. Go for what's easy, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> what works for you. That's some good, good advice. Um, I'm just going to grab a quick little sip of tea because we've got mm. our cups of tea here. and um, So we'll go on to, mm. I think, the green quilt next, Gran. Oh, that's a pretty old, a green one. Yeah, but I love it because, so the Christmas quilt was put on the bed that we'd use at your place to, when we came to stay at your place as kids. Christmas time, yeah. For Christmas time, but for the rest of the year, this one that was there. Yeah. And I also remember you stitching this, like I remember sitting, watching you by the television no, on I, your chair. It, I love this, I love the hexagon patterns because it's so easy to do just a few at a time on your lap. You know, you don't have to get out... Like all this is hand stitched, mm -hmm. and um, did you use um, paper templates in the back of yes, them? Yes, I did. Yeah. Yep. So and, English paper and, pieced, I yeah, think they call it. Then I just, um, I when I did that, I I just just um, quilted the back just in rows, mm -hmm. you know, and um, difficult to see. And we, we're trying to get to the middle of it or something. I don't we? know. We can the show the thing we is, like. it's been washed and washed and washed, and you can tell the colours are all a bit faded. Yeah, which but is I think really it adds shame. to. Well, that's yeah. the charm. It gives it an age of patina of age. <laughs> okay. Antique. Yeah. It's that that colour is not true. To, it had a lot. It more was green deeper in as a kid. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So it had. It was a lot more. This is a pretty one. I really like that one. That I'll just that show it a bit more. closer. It's a floral. I, I, I when you go into a, a quilting shop, you know. Mm. And you see all these beautiful materials. It's just such a, such a temptation to buy and buy and buy. I had to used to keep stopping myself and saying, I don't really need that. I don't really need that. <laughs> I remember you, in your craft room in your previous place, you had these tubs of um, fabric and it would be like a treasure hunt to go yeah. through and look at all these little bits. And it was also fun to find bits of things that you'd used in things before. Oh, that's a bit of what's in this quilt. And that's yeah. a bit of was in my had, Christmas dress. I had a lot left over from uh, making theatre costumes too. So that, you know, they became handy for <laughs> little bits and pieces. So you wouldn't remember how long it took you to make this? No. It's one of those questions that... <laughs> I, I, you know. Yeah, it's just, I know that the... the this this one took, mm -hmm. took me about twelve months, I think. Okay, so would you like I did individual? Yeah. Uh, I I made I made individual square uh, squares and um, yeah, and then put them together on a grid. Yeah. Would you like to show that one now, or would you like to save that for last and show you one that was your bedspread for many years? Which oh, one? Yeah, show the bedspread okay. one, I suppose. So cause... I remember this one because you spent a long time choosing the colour scheme. I did, yeah. Um, and because it was for your own bed, and yes. um, and it, um, it's where are we going here? Um, once again, it's pretty ancient. But I was going to. I started off. I was. I did a quilt for my daughter, one of my daughters, uh, Ella's auntie, um, which had every second block was embroidered and on the back it was a strip quilt. And I was going to do this pattern, yeah, this pattern here, every second block like that, but I knew it was going to take me far too long because just one of those would take me, you know, three or four weeks. Wow. So I will show that up closer in a moment because we've got a matching motif on a matching cushion. Mm -hmm. But this also has some smaller areas of embroidery as well. Mm -hmm. So that's one of my favourite things when you do mixed medium sort of quilts, by which I mean embroidery as well as quilting. Like that's so special. Mm -hmm. And I love the teals and the browns in this. And did you find the layout and getting the colours to be pleasing intimidating? I did really. <laughs> And I, I didn't know how it was going to turn out, to be truthful. Mm -hmm. In the end, I just, I did all this sort of strip quilting and then I did, then I did another lot and realised it was only 
half of one and the other half in that. It, yeah, it just sort of all came together and worked surprisingly. And I, I had a, I had um, corners, uh, four corner things on my bed, so I had to do that in each. Oh yeah, each uh, the bottom two corners of the. It's beautiful. Quilt. Yeah. So. Um, and this has got um, beautiful teal on the back and a darker teal binding. Mm. But I, my favourite thing about it is undoubtedly the embroidery on it. So I'll show you the cushion that got you. So you made two of these that went with the quilt. Mm. So they were on your bed, weren't they? Mm. Look at that. And is that... Um, so were you saying that's something you got from a quilt that you made for Annie Chris and you copied? Oh, no, or no, did no. you do the design of that? No, embroidery? I made the design up for this particularly. But just, so it just gave me the idea of doing embroidered block and then a then a quilted block and an embroidered block and then a quilted block. I That's love that I you designed that. this, Gren. It's yes, beautiful. Yes, and I've done it in pinks as well. I've done a, uh, in fact, I've got one of those on my heritage quilt. Wonderful. So in we'll pinks. show that in a moment. Yeah. Mm. And did you, when you set about designing something, do you draw it on paper or what's your process? Yes, I just draw it and then go over it with... Um... Okay, we're back. Um... And we actually used the brief interlude of Gran getting a phone call to gather some more things to show. So um, this is one of Gran's creations. It's called Winter. It's a wearable mask and I had plans to do four of them, winter, spring, summer and autumn. Mm -hmm. um, and I collected all the stuff but I only got to complete one of them. <laughs> it was this one. Uh, though I have made another one. In fact, another two C with a C, um, a C theme mm -hmm. with gels and things over them. Beautiful. And um, mm. what inspired you to go with winter first, Gran? I think the materials I used. So, what materials did you use for this one? Well, I've got fur, and I've got um, quite a, a pretty oh, well. This this perspexy stuff with with. Uh, Glass beads on it, mm -hmm. and um, that pretty silver material. It all looked wintry to me. And it's gorgeous, and you've got some lace mm. that you've cut out. And mm. How gorgeous! Mm. Did you mould it on someone's face, or what did you do? No, moulded it on that glass thing over there. Oh, Gran's got like a glass a glass head. Head mm. Mm. sounds mm. sinister. It's not as cool. <laughs> um. And then I used beads and things here, oh, and uh, some. Um, What's that stuff that I did a lot of that stuff too? Um, puff paints. Puff paint. You love mm. puff paints. My grand used to do um, <laughs> puff paint. So she'd get a white t-shirt, she'd applique some fabric on it and then mm. outline it with sort of puff paints and beads and you'd always have Christmas t-shirts that you'd make yourself. Mm, they were so cool. Um, I'll just put this down yep. delicately. Hopefully I don't give the camera too much to deal with in that. Okay, so and another thing that we thought we'd show, Gran made a set of um, couch cushions that match it. Well, they now match this couch, but they were on a previous couch that was a similar colour mm, teal. Because you they do love got, your teal. Yeah, they've all got different um, thing I designed on them. Yeah, and some we've covered with some quilts that are behind me, but mm. you've got this beautiful dark blue velvet. And, um, and I've got a velvet cushion, you see, that matches that. So is this the, which came first, chicken or the egg? The, the dark velvet cushion. <laughs> those, those these, and then you first. found that. Mm. And then you found this one, which is a shop bought yeah. one. But I love how you've teamed it all with your own handmade ones. You've got such a beautiful, unique. Um, I love grouping. I love aqua and teal and all that. Can't sort of have tell by what you're wearing today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, so these are beautiful. Now this is. Um, we're about to show the pièce de résistance, aren't we, yeah. Gran? Well, so what you call your heritage quilt. It's the heritage quilt, cause, and I, I've only made one because it took me so long to make it. It took about 12 months. Now, let's just see if we're going to start in the right spot. Is this where you'd start, or is there another spot? Oh, yeah, that'll block? do. Right, okay, right. so we're going to go block by block. So it's beautiful, made out of cottons, yeah. mainly. And that's... Um, uh, that's um, they're tiny little heritage buttons. They're made of cardboard. And they come out of the 1800s. I might get a bit closer. Probably see them there. Mm, how beautiful. And that's that's a lot. That's the sort of quilting I like to do there. You see all those, all this. Yeah. Mm. 
Medicine. Okay, so how many blocks did you say are in this quilt? Oh, I don't I think, know. I think there's about 16 or something. Okay, we'll, we'll find out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but we'll show you each of them. So yeah. was this one, the one that we just showed, more for beauty or was there a meaning behind it? Not really. It was because uh, I just had this, the, these, um, these particular pieces of material with that. They, they all had to go with that. But a lot of them have meaning. This, these are the doves of peace. Mm-hmm. These ones. So I'll get a bit closer. Mm -hmm. So you've um, the beaded and beaded and um, embroidered. They're beautiful. I'll we'll zoom right in so you can see some beading. Mm. How gorgeous! Okay, next and, block. Oh, this one is all my grandchildren. There are flowers for the girls and. Berries for the boys, and I did not. I did an extra, kept, kept a couple of extra ones in case the kids obliged me. I had nine grandchildren. I thought I might get a nice round ten, but nobody ever did oblige, so I've still got the nine. We <laughs> could go back in and um, put in your great grandchildren, my two sons, my I two could, children. But then what will happen when I get all the other great grandchildren? Yeah, you'd need a <laughs> whole nother quilt. But yeah. maybe the next generation will take up take that. Take it up. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But I love that. I love the pinks. I'm very fond of it, and I can see all my grandchildren in it: Isabel and Ella and Lucy and Charlotte and Is and Roma and who's the other girl? <laughs> I wasn't listening. I was too busy looking. Uh, I don't know who you've left out. Charlotte, Charlotte yeah. and Lucy, Emma, Emma, Emma Isabel and Roma. And Roma, that's right. And the boys. I've got Josh and Luke. And Caleb, and one more boy. No, I've only got three grandsons. <laughs> uh, we were just we're just mesmerised by the beautiful handiwork. We're not thinking straight. And that, there's a lot of um, quilting in that too. Mm. A lot of quilting. So what's in our next block? block next Granny? one is my guardian angel. And what she made out of? Uh, what's she got on her? I'll remember. move back so you can have a look. Oh yeah, she's she's got um, a little bit of very old lace mm -hmm. in the middle. Mm -hmm. She's got a lot of little beads on her, and, and those little shoes are embroidered. And yeah, I found I, I was very happy to find that little piece of material there for her hair. It just looked yeah, right again. Yeah, she's just gorgeous. Mm. And then. Um, Oh, this matching. is to match the other one on the other side. Just gorgeous. Mm. I like yeah. how fine that block is. Oh, and that in the middle is my wedding dress. I'll show you that. So you've used some Material beautiful materials yeah. of, of sentiment and meaning. And that's the thing about this quilt. You couldn't make another quilt like this. No, I because really, because I've got all sorts of pieces in it. But also, no one could. This is about, you know, your... It's about our it. family. Yeah, yeah, and your heritage. And, and it's I, got... But I, I said to the kids, there's four children, and I said, you'll have to draw lots for it because I'm not making enough. one. That's fair. That's fair. Or maybe they could have a rotation system. Oh, they could too. Actually, well, it doesn't suit all their houses, to be truthful. Oh, well. Now, that, that one there... Yeah. That's the, I'm, I do a lot of theatre work, and that's the theatre faces. It's happy and sad theatre faces there. Beautiful. Um, what have we got here, Granny? I like now, it. this one's very intricate. Yeah, this one, a friend of mine gave me the leftover stuff from her wedding dress, mm -hmm. and that was these medallions. I'll just zoom in for people. Hang on. Mm -hmm. So you've not only got celebrating family, but you're also celebrating friendship. Friends as well, yeah. You've embroidered in this pink thread between the medallions. Yes, yes. I just it, it takes. I need a little bit of colour to take off the very bland nature of it, you know. So I've got a bit of pink and I've got a little bit of blue, like um, this one here. Next one, mm -hmm. it's a crazy quilt because you do it in all crazy bits and bits and fit together mm -hmm. and that see the little bit of blue yes I it's do. a bit like when you put a they say you put the fire in the, when you do the log cabin one yeah you put the fire in and one so you've done that thing mine. yes it's a crazy quilt and um what are some of the fabrics that are in this oh well there's um i made a wedding dress for a friend and those were part of left over from the stuff from that and mm -hmm. this that is very old lace probably from the 
1800s, I think. Wow. And um, what else have we got there? Oh, I that's my wedding dress too. Mm. Gorgeous. I think that's one of the amazing things about this quilt, actually. Like it is a, it's a thing of great beauty. But also, given how much you love colour, for you to choose yes. such a restrained palette must yes. have been quite um, a challenge. You're challenging yourself. To... I was, but also I, I, I liked the idea of it as heritage and I think that you know, that made me go for that particular colour. Um, what's this block What's this one? It's no no special meaning, but I do like it very much. It's um, um, I sort of designed that myself. I mean, that's obviously hexagons aren't my design, but I designed this with the dark centre and those around the it, and then yeah, beaded it, it all around. Mm. I'll just zoom in. We've got some beautiful beading in the middle of mm. this one. I love beading. You love, I just remember you always talking about bugle beads and things when I was growing up. And one of my favourite things to do, Gran had these um, canisters that would all connect together, or still probably has them, mm -hmm. filled with beads. And, you know, occasionally in a project you might get a few mixed in. And uh -huh. I'd love... All the time. I would love going through and sorting, sorting the beads. beads. You were my champion. Uh, oh, but nothing would me. make me feel more special than getting to sort your beads. Oh. Like, And it's actually, I suppose, um, one of the earliest signs that, you know... Um, uh, that sensory experience of sorting colourful things and the mm. order that it gave me that were things that um, really mattered to me and, um, mm. yeah, and I was and very grateful now. for it I can tell you <laughs> I can imagine mm. one of my a couple of my children would um, well a couple I only have to would enjoy <laughs> doing something similar I should get them onto my craft supplies that's the log cabin with mm -hmm. um, my wedding dress in the corner there so I'll zoom just in just a bit a little bit that's beautiful you've got some lovely there's quite fabrics nice in fabrics in there. Like, you know, it's, it, it's amazing how hard it is to to be careful how you do this, which fabrics you put next to each other. You know? mm. Even though you think there's not that much difference, there's a lot of, a lot of difference in them and you need to balance them out. Mm. And for, for, is that for you trial and error? Mm. Mm. And this one, I'm very proud of this one. It's a nothing looking kind of square, this one. But... I actually followed the lace in this and that those patterns are in the lace. Mm, I'll zoom in. Yeah. Right, so, so you won't be able to see the lace, but the lace has the pattern of that lily looking thing on them and I oh, know I can see that. Yeah. Hopefully the camera is picking that up. That yeah. is absolutely gorgeous. I'm very pleased with that. Okay, I'll zoom and, out again. Um, and then we've got an, another crazy quilt. Yes, block. Another, another crazy block. Beautiful. Mm. And that's got... Um... Oh, that's right. I did a lot of herringbone stitch in that one. I'll zoom in so you can see. Um, so with crazy quilt blocks, so I imagine it's an opportunity for things to be quite freeform. Mm. Did you enjoy that or did you find it intimidating? I would be like, oh, I've accidentally put order into my crazy quilt <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> like, oh, I've repeated it. <laughs> I've never tried it before, but I imagine that's what would happen to me. You worry too much, Elle. <laughs> <laughs> now, th this one here is, mm. the, is the, the pattern, the round pattern from the cushion and the bedspread, but done in pinks and greens instead okay. of that bright aqua. So I'll zoom mm. in on that. Mm. I love my manual zooming in. Zooming in, I don't mean like with the camera. I mean, I'm moving forward to the <laughs> lens. Mm. But I love that. And I love that um, you did. You loved stitching it so much that you've done a different colourway. Mm. I've put a few more uh, flowers and things in that too. The other one's not as full as that. It's more just around the edges. But I decided since it was going to be a block, yep. that I might as well make it more interesting as a block. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, yeah, what have we got one. now? We have this one, we've got another. That's another crazy. Oh, did we go quilt. that way already? I think no, we did. Yeah, no, hang no, on. No, we didn't. No, no we didn't. That one? What's that one on the end there? Oh, there, that one. That's nice. I okay. like that. I don't know. What, it's, a, it's a cross, mm -hmm. uh, you know. For uh, your faith? Yes. There's a few things about my faith in there. The angel and the doves and the cross. and mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the beading on that one. I'll zoom mm. in. It's very intricate. I love how the the quilting plus the arrangement of the fabric, you know, mm. is in harmony. 
Mm. What else have we well, got? The, the, the way the pattern went mm -hmm. actually decided how I would do the quilting. You know, I'd sort of, oh, I'll just fill that bit in. It seems yeah. to have some lovely ribbon on it, actually. Yes, Is it that has. from something yes. in particular? It's, it's uh, yes, it's not ribbon. It's, um, what do you call it? Brussels, it's what you do Brussels lace from. Mm. Oh, that's the that's the beginning of the Brussels lace. You, you can so do. I've just, done a little bit in. Is which one have I done? The, I've done the centre of a flower in the Brussels lace somewhere. I'll show you. I probably haven't got to it yet. No, it's there. One. It is there. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Th there's another log cabin here, but we'll mm. go to the what Gran's talking about Brussels. In the middle, the lace is. Um, you buy the lace by the meter, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, then you just sort of, it has a thread through it and you just pull it. That's the other thing I've done, a bit of lace, stuff like that. Wow. And um, I like that square, it's pretty. It is. I love that it's 3D, I like that it's got. <laughs> yeah. Then what have we got here? Uh, We've got another crazy. Another crazy, yes. Nice. Oh, and this one is, um, this is from my children's weddings, this one. This one here. Because that. Let's see, that stuff there is from Janet. That's your mother's wedding dress, mm -hmm. that one and that one. And um, they're from, that's there from her wedding, you know, the, the wedding dress. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, I must have Chris's somewhere else, yeah. I'll have Chris's I'll somewhere else. in a little bit. Mm. And it's got the hearts on it for, you know, love. Lovely. Now we've got this one, Granny. Oh, this this my my sister Lolita it was always very glamorous, and she was about what eighteen years older than I am, maybe, and um, she or sixteen years older than me. And I always used to think she was terribly glamorous, and she had this beautiful gapure lace. This is gapure lace jacket, but it it got very um, you know, under the arms, nasty and everything. So I just pulled it apart and made this out of, and it just reminds me of my sister. It's beautiful, and I love that you've reused something that wasn't usable in its original mm. form. Mm. Although some of Auntie Lita's um, clothes, gee, they made things to last then, because I still have a couple of things you've handed yes. down to me that are still wearable. Um, Beautiful and, materials. And, oh, yeah. And like I, and she always had good clothes, you know. She wore very beautiful, expensive clothes. So. Yeah, so high quality things yes, that have lasted. Yes, but I yeah. do think it's also um, not just a feature of money, but a feature of things being made well. Yes, and, yes, that's true. Yes, it's sort of uh, in what in build obsolescence they say these days. Yes, I know. Ugh, phones that just die, and washing machines that last two minutes. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that's right. Yeah. So when we're crafting, we're crafting things that aren't made to be obsolete. Yeah. I like that. I'm very keen on, uh, I'm pleased with the way I did the um, quilting on this one. I'll zoom in. Zoom. <laughs> oh yeah, that is gorgeous. Yeah. I think the ring light's doing a good job of picking up some of these details, Granny. What's this one we've got here? Uh, this is just very old lace that I loved. Do you know where the lace came from? No, it was just in a, a, a shop. So selling a sort of um, old baby's clothes and things like that and they had these laces and that was one of them and it's, oh. it's obviously very old. It's I think it's been, you see, you see it, the way those daisies are, mm. yeah, they can tell it's, it's, it's old. You don't see that sort of lace anymore. I'll just zoom in. In the middle, what have oh, I yeah. got in the middle there? Oh yeah, the little button. pearl button there, that's right. Yeah. So I'll try to give you a good view of this lace. I used to use a lot of that for my dolls' clothes. Mm. You know, when I was making porcelain dolls. It's beautiful. And then we've got these, I'll we'll come back out again, but we've got these beautiful butterflies that I always, they always stood out to me when I was looking at this and admiring yes. it. Yes, I was going to put that at the top and then I thought, well, I can't have my grandchildren down at my feet. <laughs> so I had to put this down the bottom to balance it out because the same amount sort of depths of embroidery. You and know, it's got the pink them. highlights yes, as well. Yeah. So does it, uh, it's just for the beauty of it? Yeah. Yeah. There's no, no meaning behind no, it. Just that I love butterflies. And, mm. Mm. Well, that's meaning enough in my mm. book. Mm. They're gorgeous. I'll just give you as close as I can of Gran's beautiful embroidery there. Okay. And what have we got here? 
What's that one? I'll come back oh, so that's you can the see. one I was telling you about, the tatting. Ah, tatting. Okay, mm. tell us about tatting. Are you saying it has well, this a... Is, the, these were the, the nuns who um, I taught at a Nazareth school when Mike was little. And um, they, they came and gave me a duchess set, which goes on a dressing table. Two of those and a long one. And I just thought this made better use of it because you really looked at it. And underneath it is the material, the wedding dress I wore to, the dress I wore to Chris's wedding. Beautiful. I'll just zoom in mm -hmm. so that everyone can see. So you've overlaid that lace, that tatting over some beautiful... Over, over the material. And I'll just Chris's. try to move like this because it is that, it's a satiny sort of... It's um, Dupy on silk, I think. Dupy on silk, wow. Gorgeous. You've got beautiful ribbon around the edge too. And then we've got the final block, another one of these beautiful... It's the hexagon one, is it? Yes. So that's Grand's beautiful heritage quilt, and what a, what a great representation of so many meaningful things that it is. I'm so glad mm. that you invested all that time in making it. Well, I was very pleased when I finished it, to be truthful. Mm -hmm. And I had to put it together. Putting together, actually, it was quite difficult because I'm not an expert quilter at all. I think, that, I think that we might have some evidence to the contrary. No, no, no. no. When you see really beautiful quilting, you'll know this isn't really beautiful quilting. It's just, it's, you know, my attempt. But um, I had to equal even the blocks up, you know, which because even though I'd done the, the, the quilting, had sort of pulled them a little bit out of shape and stuff, so they were sometimes a little bit not right. And I ended up joining all the blocks with one strip you know of stuff yep so there's a border in between yeah it's a grid fabric yeah and i it hung it on the wall originally yep mm -hmm. so i've got um up the other end i've got um little hooks and things on it that little, i could um, put a tabs put a, little tabs that i yeah. could put um a rod through mm. yeah and that was beautiful on the wall and now it's yeah, beautiful it was on the bed that well, you displayed yeah, on yes so i haven't got I haven't got a wall big enough to display it now. So. Well, but also you've got all your beautiful art all over your, all your walls that you've made well, as I have well. To. <laughs> I suppose it would to, hang up. When you that. make so many things that you don't have enough wall space. So that's my goal too. Yeah. <laughs> There's some of my prints hanging in the community centre at the moment, actually. An exhibition. Fantastic. Yeah. I'll have to go and check it out. I would invite everyone, but I think um, <laughs> no, it may not fit so. in the community <laughs> centre. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. So thanks so much for showing me everything, Granny. You've seen it all before, but well, thank no, you but for I don't. I don't know if I've ever had it talked through in that detail. And now I'm looking at things with a new light in understanding how they're made and understanding the meaning behind mm -hmm. it. So it's really special. Um, so thank you for doing that. That's a pleasure, darling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Well, we might finish our cup of teas, but we might say yeah. goodbye to the Floss okay. Tube community. Goodbye, Floss Tube community. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> and I think um, hopefully they'll all want you back again soon. Grand will say, "Oh, we don't want Ella sitting by herself. We need we need uh, your offside." Uh, no, no. I don't mind sitting next to you any time, darling. But I'm sure you're very competent on your own. <laughs> Thanks. Um, now I haven't made an individual um, Floss Tube um, video in a little while. Things got away with me in the Christmas and managing school holidays with the kids but I'm planning to do one really soon and I've been doing lots of crafting behind the scenes so hopefully it'll be quite a good update to show. Thanks for spending some time with me and um, take each day one stitch at a time. Bye. This is what happens when you start filming quilts and then Gran becomes a rack to put them on. <laughs> Granny's getting more covered. <laughs>